So you're interested in getting a Royal Enfield. You want a budget-friendly machine that is easy to ride and maintain. Royal Enfield has quite a few motorcycles in their lineup, each of which with more curb appeal than you'd expect from their modest price point. So which Royal Enfield is best to get? Well, as much as I'd like to say Interceptor 650 and be done with it, given that it is the platform I have the most hands-on experience with, I think that would be doing all of you an injustice, as which bike is right for you will vary greatly based on your experience level and intended use. So let's break down a few situations and determine which Royal Enfield is best to get. I understand a lot of these videos we make have a very North American perspective where we have big expansive highway systems where going 75 miles per hour or more is often a daily occurrence. But I've read the comments and I've done my research and it seems that in just about every other part of the world, people ride small motorcycles. And it's not always based on licensing restrictions or tax requirements, but it's usually because of their sheer practicality. So the first category I'd like to make a recommendation for is the international commuter. Is that broad? Yes, but this is only a 10 minute video. I can't break down the riding habits of motorcyclists in every single country. So sorry, people in the Netherlands. So the general point I'm making is in this best motorcycle for those who are commuting in tight, densely populated urban areas without the need to go 186 mile per hour on the freeway. The motorcycle from Royal Enfield that is best for this type of rider is the Meteor 350. Did you think I'd have any other recommendation? It seems that this motorcycle is unanimously loved by riders everywhere other than the United States, and it is sold by the boatload. So what's the deal with the Meteor 350? The Meteor 350 is a retro cruiser-inspired motorcycle from Royal Enfield that has sort of become the everyman's Enfield in many parts of the world. It is powered by an air-cooled 349cc single-cylinder engine making around 20 horsepower and 20 foot-pounds of torque. Now that might not sound like much to the American rider, but like I said, in other countries like the UK or India, people love the Meteor 350, so I'm just reporting the facts. It is a pretty standard riding position that is not too laid back like a Harley Davidson Lazy Boy or too committed like a Cafe Racer. It is a 5-speed gearbox, another factor that is holding it back from being worthy as an American Highway Mile Crusher. The Meteor 350 is a motorcycle in its purest form with everything you need and nothing you don't. It is easy to ride, low maintenance, and costs just $4,900. That's cheaper than the Akrapovich exhaust system for a Panigale V4S, just to give you context. I feel like if it had a six-speed gearbox, the Meteor 350 could give the Rebel 300 a serious run for its money as the quintessential beginner cruiser style bike, even here in the States. But guys, with the year coming to an end and we're starting off a brand new year in 2023, I wanted to do something really special for all my sweet little squids. So to show my appreciation for all of your support throughout the riding year, we're doing a pop-up giveaway to close out 2022. We want to make sure that you're geared up for 2023, so for the first time ever in Yami New history, we're doing a gear giveaway. We've put together a complete kit with a helmet, jacket, riding jeans, gloves, and boots, and we're going to be giving it away to one lucky squid this year. Every piece of gear in this set has been curated by your sweet Papa Yam himself and is guaranteed to get you out there and ready for this riding season. It's a new year, new gear giveaway, but only for this week. Head over to shop.yamity.co, pick out anything you want from the site, and you'll be automatically entered to win this complete riding kit. There's no discount code required. If there's ever a giveaway that you do not want to miss, it is this one. One random order in this time frame is going to win, so your odds are pretty high. But time is running out. Go to shop.yamityradco and get entered to win. But what if you live in a dense urban area in the U.S. where you are not only subjected to navigating dense city traffic and pedestrians, but also civil unrest and a rapidly changing infrastructure as formerly forgotten neighborhoods are developed into communities of homogenous Airbnb rental homes and expensive coffee shops? It sounds like you might need a machine that is capable of enduring even the most extreme dystopian end times. In that case, for the urban American rider, I do recommend the Scram 411. The Scram is Royal Enfield's entry to the urban scrambler segment akin to bikes like the Spark Pillin 401 by Husqvarna. The Scram 411 was based off the engine and chassis from the Himalayan, Royal Enfield's flagship adventure platform. A little bit of sarcasm there, just uh, you know, having fun here, but modified to be better suited for riding on pavement. The Scram 411 is powered by a 411cc air-cooled single-cylinder engine that makes around 24 horsepower and 25 foot-pounds of torque. This small bump in power from the 349cc single in the Meteor 350 is enough to make the Scram more capable of tackling the speeds of American roads should your urban scrambling take you outside of the dense city center. Although it is still limited by a 5-speed transmission, this motorcycle has tall suspension with a decent 8 inches of ground clearance, as well as a 1917 wheel setup, which makes it capable of some light scrambling on some gravel while not being too awkward for pavement riding. 
The Scram 411 is pretty nice looking motorcycle as well, pairing the retro looks Royal Enfield is known for with an edgier modern scrambler aesthetic and some cool colorways. And if looks are crucial in your decision making, that might make some riders who are not infatuated with the cyberpunk styling of this fart pill in 401 to gravitate more towards the Scram, despite its heavier curb weight and smaller power output. Speaking of, the Scram 411 has a 31 inch seat height and weighs around 410 pounds. If you're a beginner rider or shorter rider cross shopping the Scram and the Svart, it's worth noting that the seat height on the Scram is nearly 2 inches lower than the Svart Pillin, which might make it feel a little more comfortable for some. The Scram 411 has a retail price of $5,100. If you're partial to the Royal Enfield brand and aesthetic but want to pursue the adventure lifestyle reflective gear and all, then the choice is obvious. But don't worry, I'm going to tell you anyway, it's the Royal Enfield Himalayan. The Himalayan is Royal Enfield's entry-level ADV bike meant for burgeoning BMW GS owners on a budget. And while the Himalayan and Scram are both designed for some on- and off-road use, the Scram is far better suited for a rider who intends to do most of the riding on the pavement. Many of the features that make the Himalayan well-suited for its off-road adventuring make it a little awkward for city use. The Himalayan is also powered by Royal Enfield's 411cc single and makes the same 24 horsepower and 24 foot-pounds of torque as the Scram, but due to its adventure livery, tips the scale at a bit more cumbersome 440 pounds. But the added components are not without purpose. The Himalayan has many mounting racks for attaching luggage or panniers that double as crash protection for the gas tank, as well as a skid plate to protect the engine in case the 9 inches of ground cleaners doesn't quite cut it while off-road. The Himalayan comes standard with the windscreen to keep the cold mountain air off your chest too. The 21 inch front wheel makes it easier to tractor over rocks and gravel when off-road, but makes it a little bit more awkward and slow to respond to rider inputs on the pavement. But I guess you have to remember what this bike is intended to do. And with these expectations in mind, it is hard to deny that the Himalayan is a pretty nice package for the price point, coming in at $54.99. The Royal Enfield Himalayan might be one of the best entry-level ADVs in the segment, rivaled only by the Duke 390 or the CRF 300L Rally, which both cost much more than the Himalayan. So what if you want a Royal Enfield but you want to go fast? Well, you're going to have to keep your expectations in check because no Royal Enfield is going to be fast compared to contemporary entry-level 650cc bikes, but if you wanted the fastest Royal Enfield or the Royal Enfield with the best horsepower per dollar figure, then you're going to want to look at either the INT650 or the Continental GT. Both bikes share the same engine and basic frame geometry, while the INT650, a bike you may be familiar with with our time as our last beginner bike giveaway, has a pretty standard upright UJM riding style. The Continental GT has a more committed cafe racer riding position with clip-on handlebars, solo seat, and a rear cow with more rear set foot pegs, but both bikes are powered by the 270 degree cross-plane parallel twin engine that has plenty of character. This air and oil cooled 648cc power plant makes 47 horsepower and 38 foot pounds of torque. And then, like I said, these aren't super fast motorcycles by most metrics, but they're the fastest you'll find wearing the Royal Enfield badge. These bikes are sort of spiritual siblings to the Harley Davidson Sportster. People haven't been riding Sportsters for the last 50 years because of the fastest, but because they're charming and classic and evoke a special feeling with their lopey, rumbly V twins. These 650cc twins from Royal Enfield strike a similar chord for charm and heritage, but if you were so inclined to make one of these bikes as fast as possible, SNS, a company who has a long tenure of making high performance parts for motorcycles for Harley Davidson and Indian, actually have a line of go fast parts for the Interceptor and Continental GT as well. They have exhaust systems, cams, high compression pistons, and even big bore kits. So if you wanted the biggest and baddest Royal Enfield with the option to build up and customize, you're probably looking at either the Interceptor 650 or the Continental GT as your bike of choice. The INT650 costs between $6,149 and $6,849 depending on which color option you go for. The Continental GT has a slightly steeper price point ranging from $6,349 to $7,149 depending on paint options. I really enjoyed our time with the Interceptor, and it got me thinking about Royal Enfield in a whole new way. I'm excited to see the effect they're going to continue to have on the motorcycle market. But what if none of these current offerings from Royal Enfield are cutting it for you? You like the brand and the style, but they just aren't quite up to your discerning standards. Well, in the pursuit of becoming the S-tier budget-conscious motorcycle company, Royal Enfield is showing no signs of slowing down, and has plenty of new bikes in the pipeline coming to market in India, which will likely debut in many other places as well. They've got a few new motorcycles building off the 650 twin platform in an attempt to extend their larger displacement offerings to match the diversity of their small bikes. Debuting in 2023 is the Royal Enfield Super Meteor 650, which is an upgraded version of the Meteor 350 beloved by many. 
It uses the same 648cc engine from the Interceptor and Continental GT models. It is designed in the same vein as the 350 with retro cruiser style, but alongside the larger engine also comes upside down forks and LED lighting. There are also plans for Himalayan 650, which bumps up the displacement of their 411cc adventure bike to 648cc with use of that existing cross-plane twin engine. It is expected that the Himalayan 650 will feature some more competitive components to rival some of that other budget-oriented brands like CF Moto, coming equipped with the TFT display. And to combat the awkwardness of a 21-inch front wheel on pavement, the 650 is also rumored to be available in a sport touring trim that will come with alloy wheels and regular street-oriented tires. Royal Enfield also debuted their prototype for the Shotgun 650 at ICMA 21, which was a bobber-style cruiser that made use of the 648cc engine. The Shotgun 650 or SG650 had chunkier tires, low-slung drag bars, a headlight cowl, and mid-forward foot controls. The point being that Royal Enfield has referred to themselves as a company in transition, meaning there should be no shortage of new bikes coming from them in the next few years that will satisfy many rider expectations. But what is your favorite Royal Enfield? Are you a 350cc simp that is annoyed that I didn't mention the Hunter 350, Bullet 350, or Classic 350? Well, too bad. Some people would like the ability to go faster than a Grom, you know. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. I'll catch you guys later. Fact. Greenland sharks, also known as gurry sharks or gray sharks, are the longest living vertebrate on Earth and can live up to 400 years. They do not reach sexual maturity until they are 150 years old. So, for all of you out there hoping that time is running out, don't worry. You may just be a Greenland shark. Goodbye. Well, look at you. You've made it to the end of another Yammy Noob video. You should consider yourself pretty lucky because I have curated this one right over here for you to continue watching. It's probably just as good as the one you just saw. Unless you hated the one you just saw. I don't know. Maybe leave me a comment down below about how you much you hated it as well, too. Or just keep watching this one. Make sure you keep watching Yammy Noob. Don't forget to keep watching Yammy Noob. That's the most important thing. Keep watching Yammy Noob.